When it comes to 3D toolpathing, Enroute software offers the same kind of functionality as we have with 2D toolpathing, which means that toolpaths that are used frequently can be saved in an easy to recall template. So what we're going to do here for our 3D part that we just created is to go to the top view. And first thing we have to do is move this into the material. When you create a 3D surface or 3D relief, it's going to be from zero up for the most part, unless you're, you're going concave into the material. And uh, what we'll now need to do is move it from above the material into the material before we toolpath it. Now, this particular part is just almost the material size, so it's actually going to fit right inside the plate. We could say fit relief would make it the exact same size as the plate. Or we can come here and just uh, take a look here and grab one of the handles and, and make it maybe just a little bit smaller than the, the plate. And this way, we're going to have a little bit of extra backing here. So now we have our part position, and we can come up here with the relief selected and go to the toolpath menu and go to hatch fill. So here we have our list of available tools, and these include all the tools in the tool library. And we can come here and select if we have previously saved a toolpath for this application, we can select it from the list of, of saved strategies. In this case, we do have one that's been selected, and uh, here I can just hit the OK button, and it's going to be that easy once you set up your, your most commonly used toolpaths to apply a toolpath to either 2D or 3D objects. And we can see the first thing that showed up here was our, our rough pass, and the second one is the more detailed pass. And we're going to go to the machining menu, and so and click on Simulate 3D. And here we have a few options, just about the resolution of the preview and, and which colors we want to use. So I'm going to hit OK here, and this shows us our material as a block. Now I'm going to say go to the first tool change, and we can see that the rough tool or the tool is going to go back and forth. And, and as it's been defined, it's going to offset from the surface just a little bit and just give us an overall cut there. And we'll say go to the next tool change. And now we have the more detailed pass at a 90% overlap. And when you set the toolpath parameters, you'll set things such as the feed rate and punch speed, the spindle RPMs, and all these details are stored then in the toolpath. It is important to make sure you do a 3D simulation because what you see here is pretty much what you're going to receive at the machine. And so it's always a good idea to make sure everything's going to look okay. And once you're comfortable that it is, and I'm just moving my, my, my view around here, it would be okay to go ahead and create your output file and send it to the machine.